Hi, you guys. I'm seeing someone is just taking the test right now, but not too many have. So it's Monday morning around 11 o'clock and it's a holiday. So I know you guys are probably, hopefully, holidaying, at least some of you guys. Um, the ones who took the test so far did really good. So hopefully that's a sign that is not too shabby and you're all going to do great. Um, I am here for you. If you have any questions, no, you don't have to come to the Zoom. You just shoot me a text and then I we can connect that way. I don't want you to be um, too anxiety ridden about my stuff in that respect. Um, I mean, it test is test, but still we got to, I have a lot of test anxiety. So if you have struggles with that, you know, it's cool. It's okay to brainstorm and, and I can see if I have some tips or other classmates do. Um, it's a weird thing. It's not that natural. But at the same time, it's, you know, it's good for us to learn how to be in sort of challenging, nervous situation and learn how to deal with that. So, you know, we want to see the positive. Anyway, after the test, we will this week now go into the muscles and the bones, which is like the stuff I love to talk about. So if you have any questions here, please, please reach out um, and and text me. I actually have... I'll show you that real quick. I have a, hmm, I made a series of videos last spring semester in class um, at Merit, and I will try to upload those here that go into a little bit more clinical as we get into muscles and bones, because that's what I do all day in practice, and so I have the patient experience with that for 20, 30 years that I can sort of you know, bring in some things that are sort of sensible when we talk about muscles and bones. Not, it's not technical. It's just sensible stuff that everybody kind of understand if you understand gravity and, you know, things like that. And once we talk about these muscle bone things, we could talk about that. So anyway, this first week, we're going to cover the skulls in this lecture part and the facial muscles. We're going to go through the lecture. Basically, I don't, you know, to some level, this is now pointing to things and saying this is this, this is this, this is that. And I'll, you know, try to say, oh, it's good for this, it's good for that. Again, you got lecture in me talking into the computer thing and then me in front of people. Look at that, my t shirt. That's the place where I used to go as a kid in the mountains. It's where the Prince Charles and people used to go, King Charles people. Um, but we talk about the skull, we talk about the different bones that make up the skull in the skull. We also talk about the face, what makes up the face. There's two different things, really. And then we get into the bone, the different skull bones. And I go through, you know, the different bones and talk about what they mean and a little bit what, what the landmarks are about them and the other bullet points. And then the lessons I talk about it. And then, and then finish up with the facial bones, which is, you know, the chewing stuff, the teeth and all that in the face. And so that's, you know, pretty much trying to get into some terminology and also, but mostly of the terminology, that's a lot of that is lab, of course. Um, um, and you just, you familiarize yourself and, and, and um, you get more and more terms that build up a web of information in your head about it. So just... Work with the process and that. So we got to start with the skull, and then we go to the facial muscles. I'm actually really proud of my facial muscles. But before I want to say that, we got to then process the information with the skull. I mean, it's questions on each chapter. You're probably more or less familiar with that process now. And then now we got to have some coloring and labeling exercises that I like to do. And the cool thing about those is. So what you have is you have videos, you have terms, and you have pictures to label those terms on here. You can annotate, but you can also print it out. And then you color it, and that way you spend a little time. So you label. Sometimes there is these lines. to ignore these lines. I just I try to get these you know pictures as good as I can from the um open sources that i find online and, and and then work with it that we can use it but taking the lines out is really tedious at some point i gotta do it and you 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 label one of these terms one time and then you color the area that the term pertains to 
And that way you spend a little time with it and you're sort of, it's actually a meditative process. A lot of students really like it. And it's known to be sort of one of the better ways to memorize these things. If you have more terms in the lab and you want to put those in too, go for it. That's perfect. I'm looking mostly on these exercises, you know, uh, spot checking and for completion, because if I can't check everybody, every little t small term, well, we're going to be here till the cows come home. Um, so, you know, because the other thing is I have videos of everything. So this video, for example, is like the question ones. You can watch that and then fill it out and it gives you all the answers. But by that, you're going through the process and learning that. So that's sort of the third thing that we do where in these chapters that we now have is the anatomy terms. And this is going to be a system that goes through the whole semester. Well, some chapters don't have anatomy terms, but whenever we have anatomy terms, we have a coloring labeling thing going on. And oh, this is not the right week. This is the wrong week. This is the right week. And so here's the coloring for the skull. And then we also have one for the facial muscles. Oh, yeah, the facial muscles. Now, I'm proud of my facial muscles because I'm like, how am I going to teach facial muscles? And you got to look at these terms, man. These terms are like, whoa, crazy. Look at these names. Sucorrugator supercilii, orbicularis oculi. So you go like, how the heck is this going to fit together? So what I try to do is I try to go with um, facial expressions, universal facial expressions of disgust, of anger, of happy. Google some of those. I can't put all the pictures up because of copyright issues. But, you know, you will see them and you'll find them. And then from there, we plug in the words and say like, oh, this muscle does that. And then it's an easier approach to say like, hey, it's called this because, you know, these words mean this. That's why it's such a long, weird name. And so that's sort of how we approach this chapter. And that's the one I figured out myself how to make it less, less boring. So if you have ideas, I mean, I did this like 15 years ago. But if you have any ideas to make it better, please reach out and tell me. And I can work with that. It's a collaborative process, this whole thing, because it's about learning. It's not about indoctrinating. Anyway, that's my opinion. And then we have a little discussion of the cell model. Uh, oh, yeah. we, Yeah, that's the one we did last time. So we talked briefly about that, and that's okay. And then a Quizlet, the question thing, and then we're done with this week. So this week should be all right in that respect. Okay, dokey. And again, if you have any questions, reach out, and I'm here for you. And that includes questions about the test. Don't be shy. Um, I understand anxiety around these things. Doesn't mean we don't have to. We have. To, we cannot not do it. We have to do it. But I can help you with getting through it if that's an issue. All right. Happy week. Bye.